Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're reviewing AEW Collision from September 23rd, 2023. Now if you haven't seen my videos before, I grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale. 1 is the worst, 5 is the best. Let's jump right into the show. We start off with a triple threat for the TNT Championship. We have Darby Allin going up against Christian Cade. Luchasaurus, who is the current champion going into the match. I thought this was a fun match. A little bit predictable at times, especially with the ending. I kind of felt this was what they were going to do. Ultimately, Christian does pick up the win when Darby hits a coffin drop on Luchasaurus and then he moves Darby. Darby off of Luchasaurus so he could get the pin, potentially teasing some kind of a dissension, but there didn't seem to be that much here. Christian is the new TNT champion, the actual champion. He's been saying he was champion ever since Luchasaurus had won the belt. I thought this was good, a little bit predictable. I'm giving it a three. That's followed up with a backstage segment with the Don Callis family. We have Kanosuke Takeshita and Sammy Guevara. Basically, they're talking about their upcoming match at Wrestle Dream against Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi. And they're bringing into their mix Will Ospreay. I think it's going to be a fun match. Good little interview here. I will say one thing. The partnership with Callis and Guevara, he needs to calm Guevara down a bit for these. Guevara doesn't always need to be amped up and seem like an energizer bunny. So maybe him being with Don Callis, Don Callis can bring some of that energy down. I'm not saying that energy is a bad thing, but dial it back a bit to make him a little bit more serious. That's all up with a backstage segment with Christian and Luchasaurus. Basically, this is where they tell Christian he's going to have a two out of three falls match at Wrestle Dream against Darby Allin. Then we go into our next match, which is a tag team match. Hook and Rob Van Dam going up against Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Angelo Parker. Cool Hand and they still have Jake Hager and Anna Jay with them. So basically the JAS without Jericho or Sammy. This is a fun match. As much as I love to say that Rob Van Dam is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time and he absolutely is. He's lost a bit of a step and that's not really a knock on him because Rob Van Dam at 75% is still better than 80 to 90% of wrestlers in the world but you could tell He's not the Rob Van Dam of 15 years ago and definitely not the Rob Van Dam of 20 years ago. This is a fun match. I do love the commentary brought up that Van Dam and Hook's father Taz had teamed up in the same building previously. That was a nice little touch. Also referencing how Rob Van Dam's wrestled so long that one of his partners and foes at one point, his son is now his partner. Not surprisingly, Hook and Van Dam pick up the win. I'm giving this one a three as well. I thought it was good. Nothing great. Next up, we have a recruitment video for the Dark Order. And it kind of felt like this harkened back to the days before Brody Lee was named the Exalted One, the leader of the Dark Order. Kind of a little bit goofy like they were back then. And I don't know if they're going for that again or if they're going back to their roots I guess. I think Brody Lee is what saved the Dark Order from being a, basically a goofy gimmick that no one cared about and making it something that people did care about. But we'll see where that goes. That's followed up with an interview with the Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. We're talking about an upcoming match that they have with the best friends. I like this. This is fun. Taven and Bennett are awesome. I'm happy to see more and more of them on TV. I still think ultimately there's going to be something where them and Adam Cole get back together and he rejoins the, the kingdom, maybe a, a four-piece kingdom with Roddy Strong now, which I think could be really fun. After that, we get our one and only women's match of the night, because of course AEW can't have more than one women's match on a show. We have Kiara Hogan going up against Julia Hart, and I love this match. The evolution of Julia Hart to where it really feels like she's the leader of the House of Black, even though it's named after Malachi Black. The way her and Brody King interacted during this match and him yelling out to her during the match. Her evolution as a wrestler herself. Kiara Hogan's a great wrestler as well. I think they should be using her more. And I've said that on previous videos. It's a really fun match. Julia picks up the win. Afterward, we see her still attacking Kiara Hogan, which brings out Sky Blue who tries to get in the face of Julia Hart, but Brody King gets in her way, and he moves out for a second, so Julia can hit my favorite move in all of wrestling, the Poison Mist. And she hit the blue one, which if I remember my lore for the Poison Mist correctly, blue's supposed to paralyze you momentarily. This is cool. Brody King and Julia cut a promo, basically saying that she wants to get the TBS championship off of Chris Statlander. Eventually, later in the 
show, we see that a match has been signed for Wrestle Dreams, and that's going to be really fun. I kind of wonder, every time we see a Chris Statlander match, is this a match we're going to take the belt off of her? I still feel like it's too early, but I also feel like someone like Julia could really use that bump. Could be fun. I'm giving this all a four. I thought it was really... Then we get a promo for The Righteous, who are somewhat creepy and spooky and kind of a Wyatt family vibe, and they've had that vibe since Ring of Honor. The one criticism I will say is it's a little bit too much on a show where we have the House of Black represented and they're the scary spooky team and also the Dark Order who has a similar spooky theme to them that we have a third team that's kind of like that. I'm not saying that Vincent or Dutch are bad wrestlers. I think they're really good actually. I think it's a little too much of the same gimmick with different coats of paint. Basically this would be like owning multiple cars and three of them are Honda Accord and one is purple, one is dark purple, and the other is light purple. You got three purple Honda Accords, and they're great cars, don't get me wrong, but why would you want to own three of basically the same thing? Just when I'm, just my opinion on it, maybe move one of these back to Ring of Honor, keep one as a collision act, keep one as a dynamite act. That's what I would, now coming from that, we get a match with Jay White versus Andrade Alidolo. This was a barn. I absolutely love this match. These are two guys that I think the invention of AEW Collision has skyrocketed their value in AEW. Prior to Collision, I feel like they were both floundering a bit, but you can see here where this is two of the best wrestlers in the world and they're showing a reason why they are two of the best. Jay has Bullet Club Gold with him, which caused a lot of distractions. I kind of expected LeFaction and Gover Nobles to come out and help. They didn't. Card Blade was on commentary, which is kind of funny. Juice Robinson's just great. Juice almost has a Damien Sandow to the Miz vibe to him, and not saying that Jay White's a Miz at all, but kind of how Sandow would take a lot of the reaction and a lot of the a lot of the spotlight was on him instead of being on the Miz. I kind of feel like Juice is that here but not in a bad. Ultimately, Jay White does get the win when Juice helps him out by cheating behind the ref's back and hitting Andrade in the head with a with an award. I thought this was awesome. I'm giving it a five. I'd love to see him run it back, maybe in an Iron Man match or a ladder match or some other kind of match that we've seen both of them be in. I think it'd be awesome. Next up, we get a pre tape promo with Ortiz, who's talking about Mike Santana. For something I had very little interest in, I like Santana and Ortiz as tag team. I thought they were awesome. Loved them as L. LAX, loved him as Proud and Powerful. I think they definitely deserve to have a run with the AEW Tag Championships. I was a little bit worried breaking the team up because I kind of feel like even though they want to be broken up, I feel like this was another one of those situations where the sum of the part was better than the parts itself. Ortiz cut an amazing promo here. This was a great promo to sell Ortiz as a solo. Santana's done some great work as well over the past couple. I will say at this point I'm cautiously optimistic on the two. Maybe we'll have two future stars coming out of it. I hope so. Maybe we get a return somewhere down the road. That would be awesome. Next we get a backstage promo with Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty basically talking about Keith Lee and the history between Taylor and Lee. This is the thing that I love about Collision that seems to not be used as much on Dynamite and other wrestling shows. They give backstory. They give reason. Much like I said with the Hook and RVD talking about how RVD teamed with Taz previously in the same stadium. We get the backstory of Shane Taylor and Keith Lee in Ring of Honor and how Keith Lee left him high and dry. I thought this was pretty good. Shane Taylor is an amazing speaker. I'm very glad that he's getting an opportunity. Speaking of opportunity, we have the workhorse Anthony Henry, JD Drake going up against FTR, Dax Harwood, and Cash Wheeler with Aussie Open on commentary because next week Aussie Open is going to wrestle FTR at Wrestle Dream, which made it kind of telegraphed that this wasn't going to be a title chain, which any other week I think would have done wonders to put a not a new team but a new team in fans' eyes like the workhorse maneuver like that. This to me was showing the world, the AEW world, how good the workhorsemen were. And FTR, we all know that they're one of the best tag teams the world today and probably one of the top tag teams of all time but Henry and Drake they're people and I could be a little bit biased here because pull back the curtain a bit I've worked on a podcast where we talked to JD Drake a bunch of times talked to Anthony Henry they were both very nice very respectful very giving with their time so I'm predisposed to like both of the men so I do want to put that out there there is a, a 
bias for them, I guess you could say. And I think that the world needed to see this. I think these guys are amazing and they definitely deserve a more prominent role in AEW. This is a fantastic match. Even though the outcome was pretty much telegraphed with FTR picking up the win, I really enjoyed this. Afterwards, we see a stare down between them and Aussie Open. I thought this was really fun. I'm giving it a four. After that, we get a backstage interview with CJ. They're just calling her CJ, so I'm guessing that's what she's going by, which gets interrupted almost immediately by Miro. Basically, Miro says he's trying to redeem AEW, and if CJ's here, he has to redeem her too because she's there for the spotlight, for the attention, which is a lot of what the criticism about CJ has been in the past. So kind of cool that they're tying that in. She asks him that if she manages somebody else, the only thing she wants if he still has any love in his heart for her is to stay out of her business. He walks away without giving her an answer. I kind of feel like we might get a MacGuffin with this, where CJ manages somebody for a little bit, Miro comes out and attacks them, maybe to win a championship from them, and instead of CJ being upset with Miro, we see Miro turn and reunite with his, his hot, flexible wife. I think that would be awesome. Then we get our main event, Texas Deathmatch, Ricky Starks versus Brian Dan. Again, commentary hits us with the history. Jim Ross is there on commentary for the main event, which I have love. They talk about how Dory Funk Sr is the person that created the match and how Junior and Terry Funk are the ones that revolutionized it and made it really popular. This was awesome. For a feud that basically happened because somebody else got fired, this is turning out to be one of my favorite feuds of the year. Danielson and Starks, they just have something there. And Starks specific, I don't know why he hasn't been given a more prominent role, why he hasn't had a TNT champion, an international champion, tag team championship or any. To me, the guy is money. I thought this was really fun. The level of violence was dialed up. It felt like a Texas death match, like an old old school one that you would see with Terry Funk or Dory Funk Jr. in. It felt like these guys were trying to incapacitate each other. And they did do the Texas Deathmatch rules properly, which actually on AEW in the past they have, which is you have to answer the 10 count. This was really, really fun. It showed again Starks' toughness where Danielson basically tortured him and he still didn't give up. He had to be knocked out. Danielson did pick up the win here. We get a little bit afterwards with Wheeler Yuta and Big Bill coming out maybe to set up a tag team at some point. I thought this was awesome. I'm giving this a five. I thought it really good. All in all, I thought this card was really good from the beginning to the end. The quality stayed pretty high all the way through. It built the first couple matches, built the importance to some of the later matches. We had a, a championship match off the top of the show. We had one of their biggest stars in the company in the main event. We had a legendary wrestler basically in the area he grew up with in Rob Van Dam. I thought this was fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm giving the show a four overall. That being said, smash the like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. If you see where it says join, that's how you become a channel member. Becoming a channel member definitely helps me out. With that being said, if you made it to the end, throw a workhorseman up in the comments for Anthony Henry and JD Drake. Bravo, guys. You guys did awesome. I hope they highlight and use you guys more going forward. I think it would be. With that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been my review of AEW.